Hello, and in this video I want to show you how I built the live falling rock system. So here, this is a Python tool, so when I click, it will drop a rock on that place. So this makes it quite interactive to make a certain scene over it in rocks. Before we start, this video is focused for more experienced users with Houdini, because we will use some more Python and Vex in the video. So here in my scene, let's just create an add node. And I will already convert this into a digital asset, so an HTA. So I'm going to create a subnetwork, right click, create a digital asset. And I'm going to call it Rock Fallen. Now we immediately have this menu where we create parameters. So I'm going to go to parameters. And I immediately will expose all the values here from my add node. So what I'm mainly interested in is here is this uh, multi-parameter. So we're going to just drag and drop the number of points. And we now have that here in our parameter interface. Then press apply. Then I immediately going to go and add my Python state. So go to interactive. I'm going to go here and say new Python state. So new viewer Python state. And in this case, we're going to just use the preset or sample for adding points and then just click accept. So now here it will generate some basic Python code. And this Python code here is some instructions of how to use this sample and this sample automatically works with this add node. So it will tell you to expose basically these parameters and then it will work with it. So further down, it just creates some basic context and features when I click my mouse. So here we have the mouse interaction functions. So when I click my mouse, we will actually place a point. So now let's test our tool. And when I click it on mouse, I can see that we can add points every time I click. So that's what I want. So every time I have a click, I want to have a rock falling in that exact point. We can also quickly click clear here. And now just have one point to like start with and test out. So here we have our add node. I'm going to probably give this a color. So I know that this was my intractable Python state. And now I want to place a transform and this will be the height of the falling. So fall height. Let's say we can, for example, set this to 10. So the rock will start falling from here and then it will go to there. Then I'm going to place down a wrangle node and I'm going to build a basic falling system. So falling. Now in here, I'm going to just use the position dot Y and I'm going to say minus the time, for example, you can use other values as well. So minus time. And now when I would press play here, we now have a falling point. Now what is very useful here is if we multiply this by a channel, for example, called speed. And we click the icon over here and we multiply this by, for example, the 9.1, the classic gravity value. And now we have the point falling. Now I also want to uh, let the point stop at a certain point. So I'm going to keep it simple and place another wrangle and just like stop position. And just we're going to create an if statement. So if the points dot y would be lower than zero, then I would like the point to stop also at zero equals to zero then. So now it doesn't go below zero now. So I made this into the light challenge. So I made it as simple as possible and doesn't have any super complex like collision detections and so on. Just like simply just stopping it here at uh, the zero point. So we can make it more complex and add some more detection on actually where a certain surface is and so on. So this is the basic ID of the system. I just let the point fall down where I click my mouse. 
we can also now for visualization make a for example a rock on the point so we can just copy paste the rock shape so if you if you watched one of my rock tutorials you can just follow one of my rock videos and use some of the rock systems there so this is what i have here a simple rock shape just some shapes copied into each other from a rock generator so we have this falling down now let's test our system more so let's press clear so when i click i can now place these rocks and they will just fall down but when i click another one it immediately is falling down so the system here so what i need to do is i would like to actually have the frame number or a certain time number when i click on my mouse i would also like to store the frame number so i actually know when to trigger the falling effect so what is happening here is the falling will immediately start as soon as i press play but i don't want that because if i press here at frame 200 i want my rock to start falling at frame 200 and not just starting it randomly from frame zero so what i will do is we can for example use the the value here we have we like the weight value and store in a frame number so we're going to go back in the python state so we can open the menu and we're going to go to interactive and we're going to go here to our mouse event so here this is the mouse event and here we have actually the the thing that is triggering when we're clicking on our mouse so when we click uh, the left button we will basically set the the toggle here this toggle that is created for each point we're going to set this to one so it's on and we're also going to save out a position which is then of course here our position but we're not really using the the w here which is called weight if i go here to parameter it is called weight so i can use this to for example store uh, the frame number so what i will do we can copy paste actually this value here so copy paste this place this underneath it and now we have to type in the right parameter so i want to store in the weight the frame number so look in the notes for a parameter called weight then this percentage shine d basically will give the index so the number here so it will return the current number so in this case it will return nine and then it will set a certain value so in this case i would like it to set the current frame number and we can do that by typing in who dot frame and this will give me the frame number and that's basically it so i'm going to press apply so in the weight at the, so in the weight parameter which is here this one we will now have the frame number i can also here switch this type from the logarithmic float to a normal integer like so and press apply and accept this so now when i just let my play bar go also i set my play bar here to a thousand frames and you can also click this icon here to get to playback in real time so you can control a bit more on the speed so everything falls down but when i click with my mouse now i can see i can actually store the frame numbers as you can see we now have actually stored the frame number on each click so now i know actually when to trigger my rock and not just start from uh, the first frame so here i'm gonna cl quickly clear it and place down a few rocks let's go back into our system so i would like to have access here to that number of frames when i click now we're going to have to access the parameter and for that we're actually going to have to loop over each individual point here so what i will do is i will do a for each point so we'll loop over each individual point and i will ask on each point what is your frame number 
we're going to also create a attribute and this can then be my start frame and in this I also want to make sure it's an integer and I'm going to set in here a default value so I want to also create a metadata import node so in the attribute create here in this value I'm going to create this expression so what I will do is I want to access my weight value from the multi-parameter so I want to say I want to access a certain parameter so returns value of a parameter and with this and with this expression here we can actually combine two strings together so I want to combine the location to the weight parameter and here I want to get the number of the loop so I'm going to go as the details of the for each begin metadata nodes and I would like to have the iteration number and then the first index so I'm basically asking here what is your current uh, loop number so if it's the first loop it will return uh, zero and then we can access these values because here for example if you just type in channel and I would like to have access to the weight value we can see that we have zero one two three so we're gonna have to make a system that automatically will go over each one of them and that that is why we need the loop to go over each of them so now here as a result we will do four loops so we will go over each weight parameter and we will store this now in the values so i will now have on each point a attribute called start frame so we have 13 19 24 uh, 32. so if i double check this here we can see that it is working i can always here as you can see afterwards change this so that's something interesting as well is i can always go back here and uh, set off the frames so we can control the timing afterwards as well so now I plug this in the system so now here in our filing system i'm going to create an if statement so we trigger this at the right moment so this should only be triggered when our current frame number so we can just type in add frame is bigger or equal to my start frame attributes so start frame and then we trigger this so I'm going to press play and we can see them now falling down but you can also notice that it doesn't go so smoothly and it is because here I am using uh, the add time so it will return the time here of my play bar so when the time is for example here this amount it will immediately say minus for example five or three or so on so we're gonna have to switch this here as well i'm gonna just say add frame minus the starting frame and i'm gonna calculate this first and let's see if that works better and i'm also lowering down here the speed so let's see as you can see this works now better so we are having now more control in when it starts and that's basically it we can also expose the speed of course but now i have a tool when i just press play i can now have these falling rocks so we can control them where they actually fall and keep clicking them and spawning them everywhere so you can keep improving on the system but this is like the very basic system you need and you can like keep adding stuff like i did with my example but i added some more debris and some other destruction elements so what you see actually is mainly actually faked so don't expect any real simulations going on they are just being faked and not pre-baked information so it goes super fast in the viewport so I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe and see you on the next one.